Available now in graphic audio. Hey, warrior! Come out and play! <laughs> dead, dead, dead! Graphic Audio presents American Craftsman. I want to hear about the mission, Dale. Are you cleared to hear about what I do? That's not for you to decide. The sooner you cooperate, the sooner you can leave. I'm not going to tell you anything. Then I'm authorized to use harsh technique. You're going to torture me? <laughs> Joke's on you, pal. Tell me about the mission, Dale. Now, let's start at the beginning. My ancestor, Thomas Morton, was the first great American craftsman. And what did he make? I'm getting to that. He arrived in Massachusetts in 1624 and found that in this new land, he had strange new powers. He could alter the weather. He could see the sins of men and could influence their will. So, Morton passed his abilities to his part native descendant. And you're one of these magical descendants? That's right, I'm a craftsman. What, you say some backwards Latin mumbo jumbo? Shut up. <laughs> Sit. I was on that mission for a reason. Farsight should have seen this setup. Somebody wants me out of the game. I think we're done for the day, don't you? Please help me undo these straps. <sighs> They're gonna explain everything later, I expect. But you might as well hear it from me. Even if I hadn't stopped you, they were never ever gonna allow you to administer serious psychoactives or pain. You know why that is, Doctor? Speak. Uh, um... Uh, Please speak for the microphone, Doctor. No. Because my family scares the shit out of them. <laughs> I don't blame them. We once produced pure evil, and they're terrified we'll do it again. But we're useful. So they'll never really hurt me, unless they mean to kill me. I completed my mission, sir. I pissed Morton off, baited him, pushed every pagan button, threw in some obvious spirit compulsion. He didn't bite. You've spoken with him since? He asked to leave town. I said no. He wanted to speak with Colonel Hutchinson. He made another vague threat. What's his real reason for leaving? From what I heard at the Nut House, he may think someone is pursuing him. He may suspect that Sphinx is a mole. His fear may be baseless, but nonetheless sincere. His family has a history of paranoia, followed by violence, so we can expect trouble. Sir, why are we pushing Morton like this? He's with the left hand, Mortons. That branch died out in the 1800s, sir. <laughs> died out is a gentle and inaccurate way of putting it. The families under Abram exterminated any of the left hand they could find. But not before the left hand had killed more than a few family members and more than a few Endicotts. And not before some of the evil escaped. Sir, that was a long time ago. Time doesn't matter to the left hand Mortons. They have an ambiguous relationship with death. They think long term. Very long term. Who are you? Sorry, I won't even let your ghost know that. And tell me why. It's nothing personal, at least not this time. You and your kind are in the way. But I salute your stamina. You've cost me much more time and effort than any of the others. So far. Still, I owe you something for your trouble. Oh! You may remember this from the Salem Witch Trials, the Pen Forte Dure. I'll be considerably quicker in applying the weight. You will kneel, then bow, then grovel, then die. <gasps> Your lungs are surprisingly strong. <clears throat> While you still have enough breath, any last words? <laughs> You're a fool for taking everything you have. You've left me my Morton dead. They can't hurt me. We just have to hold you. Uh, uh, uh. Usher in the new age. You can't kill me. I have seen it. No one can see the heart of the house of Morton. <laughs> American Craftsman, Book One. American Craftsman. Available now in graphic audio.